So twice this week, I've gotten asked similar questions about how to make it as a blogger or an influencer, how to just start getting noticed. This kind of question always really puts things into perspective for me because there are still so, so, so many days where I feel like that I'm not getting noticed or that I feel like what I'm putting out there is not enough or that I'm not succeeding like at all. And so to get a question like that and to have somebody ask me that, it just, it shows that in other people's eyes that I am getting somewhere. And we often forget that, you know, in our, when it's, when we're that close and when it's ourselves. And so one first thing, I want you to just know that if you're feeling like you're not being noticed enough or good enough or that you're not bringing enough to the table that there are so many days that I still feel like that too but there are still so many days where people remind me that I am enough and that I'm doing enough and that I'm being enough and so I want to take a second to remind you that too that you are enough and what you're putting out there is great and the most important lesson that you can learn in this online space is the power of patience because sometimes it has nothing to do with you and the quality of your content and the quality of your ideas and everything to do with just time and building and growing and establishing what you are trying to create and if you don't have patience you're never going to get there because you have to be able to stick out the tough moments now that being said there are a couple things that i have done that have really helped me feel noticed that have helped me get to where I have gotten now and so let it be known that well that's kind of ironic because this is going on YouTube and at the time I'm doing this I only have like 35 YouTube followers so I'm not telling you how to be an influencer on YouTube because I'm still figuring that out because Instagram and my website hitthegem.com are really my most um, where most of my activity engagement and content happens on so that is what I am advising you on today not so much YouTube I want it also to be known that I have a little over 8,000 Instagram followers right now. And so, no, it's not a ton. And for some people or some brands that they might look at me and think that that's nothing. But I can tell you that after many, many years of working my butt off, this is the first time that my my blog and my brand is, is becoming something that is somewhat able to support me. I still teach a couple yoga classes a week. Um, but other than that, you know, for the first time, I don't have to like work my butt off. I mean, I still need to work my butt off, but before I was finding like every little means possible that I could to try to bring in like any extra income. And I was holding on to that and whether, whether it was babysitting or selling stuff on eBay or, and, and I still do those things, but they're because I want to get rid of my stuff and because I love kids. It's not so much an obligation now because my blog is finally starting to support the life, my life for me and what I want to do. And so I'm not, you know, I'm not making millions of dollars a year. I don't have hundreds of thousands of millions of followers, but I am starting to become in what my eyes is successful. And that's important because I think that so often we only get a view from people only make videos like this when they have, you know, a hundred thousand followers and you're like, well, you've gone so far. Like, do you even remember what it was like to be where I'm at? Do you even remember what it was like to have 500 followers? And so, yeah, I, I don't know everything and I still have so much left to learn, but I do have some really great tips for you that I think that no matter where you are, you can take away from this and you can use them to help you get to at least where I'm at and hopefully by the time that you get there I'll have some new tips and tricks up my sleeve for you so the first thing is is that you don't get noticed like it, that's just not how it happens you don't get noticed you show up you show up and a lot of that is creating your own opportunities. You can't sit back and wait for brands to email you and reach out for a partnership. You can't wait for your blog post to go viral. You can't sit back and wait and think that if I just keep trucking along that I'm going to get seen. You have to show up. You have to put yourself out there. You have to contact brands no matter how big or small you are. You have to, you know, do your research and find platforms that connect brands with bloggers and influencers. You have to network. I can tell you that most of the people that like religiously comment on my stuff, the people who show up for me all of the time, almost regardless of what I post, are people who one, I either know personally, like a lot of the um, students that I teach yoga to, like they are very supportive of my stuff. Two, there's somebody who has been following me since my PR days when I was when I owned a PR firm and when I did things that were not blogging 
or three, there's somebody that I met at a networking event. I mean, yes, I have other followers that have found me online, but those deeper connections are the people who support me day in and day out. The people who like, even when I post something that I'm not a hundred percent sure about that they comment and they're there for me. And so it's not just showing up online. It's showing up in person and it's not only showing up, but also being proud of what you're putting out there, proud enough of what you're putting out there to be able to share it with your personal connections and to share it on your personal Facebook wall. And that kind of stuff is really important. My second tip for you is you're not perfect and you don't have to be perfect for this blogging world because I'm certainly not. I mean, oh my goodness, today I just posted a video or I posted, I, well, I did, I posted a video yesterday, but I was wearing an off the shoulder top and in the video, like I completely look naked for most of it until I like notice halfway through the video and I'm like, oh crap, I'm filming and I look naked. Um, and I shared that on my personal Facebook page a word of advice like don't wear off shoulder tops and film videos and it got so many engagements and so many people were like oh I did that in my driver's license photo or I did that one time on Instagram stories and it's you connect more with people in the imperfect moments than you ever do with a perfect image and I know that I post a lot of high quality content and a lot of high quality images because I love photography and I am very attracted to visual type things and that does get engagement but I can tell you that anytime I post something that's not perfect anytime that I post something that it is that's relatable that people will will get and be able to um, level with me on that kind of stuff does a thousand times better so yeah I'm gonna put out the pretty content because I love that and I love to look at nice photos and but you have to mix it up you can't post all of that kind of stuff and think nobody wants to follow like this human being that seems a hundred percent perfect like maybe Meghan Markle but even then she's like so relatable but you don't have to be somebody like that and that taking that pressure off does wonders for your sanity and for your mindset so take the pressure off now you don't have to be perfect and post stuff like that the other day I was trying to make grilled cheese and I like was rushing and I put it in the toaster instead of on the skillet like how stupid was I but it's just tiniest things like post when you screw up post when you do something stupid you never know who's gonna be like oh my god I'm so glad that I'm not the only one who did that thing and those kind of things have gotten me way more engagement than anything else Along those lines, the, this is kind of my third tip, but it rolls right into the second one, is you have to share your story. There is a reason why, why you are showing up online. Like being a blogger or an Instagram or a YouTuber or an influencer, like it's not easy. People think that you can just like, you know, arrive and all of a sudden have all these followers and be this major influence. And, and it can appear like that, I think sometimes, but no one gets here without a good reason why and yes yeah, sometimes on very rare occasions depending on what you're creating content around you can occasionally maybe get successful without sharing any kind of personal story but I've I, don't, I can't even think of any examples where that has worked off the top of my head for other people and so I that's definitely not a route that I would recommend because sharing your story is so powerful there is a reason that you're putting all of this time and effort and money and sanity and energy into your influence into your platforms and it's not just because you want to have a voice or it's not just because you want to be an influence it's because you care about something and you care about people enough that you want to provide them some kind of value sometimes i think that you don't you know other people like we don't always know what our own stories are we want to do something but we're not always sure why and so you have to dig deep you have to find your why you and in some way it is connected to something that you have gone through that's been really crappy I am 100% sure whatever you're doing right now or whatever you want to be doing, whatever you want to be creating is absolutely related to something really bad that you've went through. And because it's our struggles that cultivate the biggest strengths that we have. It's the crap that we have been through that creates us into our best selves. And so really think about that as you're showing up online and as you're putting yourself out there. And I'm not going to get into my story today because I feel like that a lot of you have kind of uh, heard a lot of it but you know that I've really struggled with with anxiety and depression and mental health and a lot of you might know that I also lost my dad to suicide and so mental health is the most important thing to me which might seem a little off because if you know me I talk about fashion and beauty and lifestyle stuff a lot but at the end of the day 
I want people to feel supported and I want people to be able to have some control over their moods and to be uplifted and to be able to get to a stronger place mentally. And so at the end of the day, like a a lipstick is not just a pink lipstick. Like it's a lipstick that made me feel some kind of feeling or emotion in a certain moment that allowed me to hold on to something good or allowed me to get over something crappy. Same with outfits and fashion. There's so much depth to it. And that's my why is because I want people to know that they're not alone. And I want people to know that the little decisions that we make every day can have such a massive impact on our mental health and how we kind of approach the world. And now knowing that, I'm sure that you feel more connected to me and my mission and my why. And that's only like the teeniest, tiniest little sliver of my story. And so you have to find your story and what is kind of backing all of this up for you. My last tip for getting noticed and for getting people to pay attention to you are ask a ton of questions. And I'm not just talking about questions like so that you can learn more from other people or people who like you admire. You might ask them too, but like ask your audience questions. Ask them, you know, what are you more likely to read this post or this post with this title? Ask them what kind of stuff they would like to see from you. Ask them if they would like to see a a YouTube tutorial of the look, the makeup look that you are wearing with this outfit. Like ask them questions all the time. Ask them what they're dealing with. Ask them what they love. Ask them what is currently stressing them out. And it's one, it's about getting to know your audience. I mean, that is the first half of it. And that's definitely absolutely something that you want to make sure that you do is to get to know them. But two, most importantly, what this does, what asking your audience a ton of questions does is it allows them to feel like they have a voice. It allows them to feel like they are involved in what you're doing and what you're creating. And I think that that, I don't think I know, that that is one of the major secrets to really cultivating a loyal community is to make your people feel like they're a part of it. And so it might seem really, really small at first. Like you might only have one person answer your question. And that's really cool because you allowed that one person to feel like their opinion mattered. In a world of noise, in a world where so many people feel like they can never be heard and that when they speak up, it just lands in thin air. And you gave that power to one person. You let somebody, one person know that you were listening to them, that you valued their thoughts. I mean, that's huge. And it's those little one-to-one connections over and over and over again that are going to allow you to get you to be noticed. And you never know, you know, what online platform somebody else works at or what brand their employee is, or employer is like you don't know these one people one to one kind of one person to one person human interactions you have no idea who they're involved with or what kind of opportunities that one person is involved in now or that that one person could be involved in five years from now like you have no idea down the road how many people are you know you might meet you might have somebody who was like I knew her because she she replied to my Instagram DM and she was so sweet and I've been following her journey and then she might end up as like the editor of your favorite magazine one day and be like I have to interview her and we'll reach out like it's just serendipitous kind of moments like that that you're you're creating your future for yourself right now and so that is I'm gonna wrap it up because you guys don't like when I do long videos and this has already been lengthy but so the secrets are to one is you don't get noticed, you show up and you make your own opportunities for yourself. Two, you ha- you can't be perfect, you just can't. And so literally make it your goal to not be perfect. And three, you have to share your story. You've gotta find what your story is, what your why is, and you've gotta be willing to get vulnerable and to let people in on that. And then four, you have to ask a ton of questions. You have to allow other people to feel like they have a voice. You have to allow other people to feel like them being involved in your content, in your journey matters because that's going to make a massive impact for them and thus for whatever it is that you are creating and doing. So that's all I have for today. And I hope you like this. If you have questions on any of these tips or if you'd like to hear more, um, let me know if there's any follow-up videos you want me to do on this or if you want me to elaborate on anything that I said and have a great week. I'll see you next Friday.